Today we'll be taking our first look at the pinnacle of the Italian tech tree line of battleships, the Tier 8 Lepanto, which in this particular battle is fully stock. Yes, that's right, I only have the modules installed, and I am of course running the secondary module in the first slot, propulsion in the second, concealment in the third, and the other secondary mod that decreases the reload in the fourth and final slot. As for the commander, it is Paolo D. Revel with Hipper and Haruna as inspirations, because these secondaries are monstrous. There are 12, or rather 24, 90mm secondaries, and there are a whopping 18, 152mm secondaries. This thing's basically got the firepower of an Abruzzi on either side of the ship. And, of course, because it's Italian, these secondaries shoot sap. And sap on secondaries this numerous and this fast firing, and with this much range, by the way, I've got them ranging out to 9.4 kilometers with Hipper, Haruna, and the requisite modules. They're monstrously effective. This ship, like the rest of the Italian battleship tech tree line, is designed to be able to push in. It gets one extra heal than most other battleships, so you can see we've got a total of six. We've got three of the rolling smokes, so we have concealment on demand. Of course, if you are going to deploy the smokescreen generator, it is always important to make sure you're not under the smoke firing penalty. And you can see just by looking at the minimap that as of this moment, we are not under the smoke firing penalty. That's sort of how you can monitor it when you shoot your guns. Of course, your detectability blooms out to the maximum gun range. And then after about 20 seconds, it falls back to the normal detectability range. And you can see that on the minimap when the blue concealment circle turns orange and gets bigger. And then when it turns back to blue and gets smaller, that's when you know you can deploy your smoke screen and not have to worry about the penalty. In any case, our entire goal here is to push up as close as possible so we can get these secondaries singing, and they're beginning to. We've spawned south of the Charlie cap, so we're leading our team's push into the cap, deploying the smoke screen in order to sort of wait out this Iwami. I find when you're sitting right in front of a battleship with this smoke screen deployed, it causes them to not really know what to do. The Iwami has just not decided. I guess he's waiting for us. And after he takes a big hit from our teammates, we finish him off, giving all that broadside. We'll move up further toward the Iowa now, so that hopefully we can get our secondaries on target against him. And I don't know, but it doesn't seem like any one of the enemy team's three destroyers are in this area, so we should be good. I can't imagine what the Lepanto will be like when I do get it fully upgraded. As of right now, without any of the upgrades, it has 72,100 HP, it's got a rather pedestrian top speed of 26 knots, and the guns barely range out above 15 kilometers with this Paolo di Ravel build. Even so, the ship, when you get it in the right places, is excellent. The Iowa, I don't think, is going to be able to demonstrate to us what this ship can actually do, and apparently we weren't taking as much of an account as the Iwami's torpedoes as we should have, because of course it's a Japanese battleship with torpedoes, and you know every time they go broadside in front of you like that, it's to get the torpedoes on target. So we do take one on the nose, which is not ideal. But on the other hand, we have taken this cap, and the Kagero has been spotted seven kilometers away from us, at least briefly for a moment. He goes dark as he deploys his smoke screen and none of the secondaries hit, but if they do, rest assured, they can shred destroyers. This sap is no joke. These are probably some of the most effective secondaries in the game right now. Even with their range capped at just below 10 kilometers, 7 kilometers on things like the Veneto at tier 7, not ideal, but you could still get those secondaries singing and doing some work. Now, with this battleship, all bets are off. I would not be surprised to see these secondaries nerfed, actually. The 90mm ones, when you build for them, can reload in 2.8 seconds, and I'm pretty sure even at 90mm, which is an exceptionally small gun size, the sap secondaries can still pen 25 or 26 millimeters of armor. Not 100% sure what the exact number is, but they will and can do damage. 
If they were conventional HE firing secondaries, they would be able to pen literally nothing. But since they shoot sap, they're actually quite useful. And that's to say nothing of the 152s, which can pen over 32 millimeters of armor. I think the actual value might be 36. Again, not entirely sure on that. But when these secondaries hit, practically anything, whether it's a battleship cruiser or especially a destroyer, they absolutely shred. And because they are sap, they have sort of the penetrative qualities of high explosive shells, but they have the punching power of armor piercing. And if you allow yourself to take sustained damage from these things for a long period of time, your HP will quickly melt away. There is something to be said, though, about angling against these sap secondaries if you are, for example, in a battleship. They tend to not always do as much damage against angled targets, and of course they can't start fires. But against anything giving you a slight angle or anything broadside, look out. And of course you can deploy the smokescreen generator to keep yourself concealed and let your secondaries do the talking for a while. Or, you know, you may need to deploy it in order to disengage from a sticky situation. The one thing the Lepanto is not good at is kiting. The firing angles on the guns facing the rear are pretty bad. So are the firing angles facing forward, honestly, but the armor on this thing is exceptionally good. And plus, on the back, if you notice near the stern, it has one of those step things going on with a box sort of behind the rear turret. That box is good for nothing except catching and arming enemy shells. So, honestly, I recommend kiting in battleships quite often, but it's not going to be ideal for this one. What you want to do is carefully plan your movements down the map. You want to time your pushes. You want to make use of this smoke screen to conceal your approach. And you basically want to try to find a place where you can get in close and brawl. If you do, you'll be rewarded. And you'll see that here coming up in this sequence. We do have to be exceptionally careful, actually. We're pushing into what could be a terrible crossfire, but we're concealed on our approach. And if we park it behind this island, I don't think anything has line of sight on us. We've got an Iowa out there that is a slight concern, but he's doing the typical battleship bow tank reverse maneuver, and he's giving broadside to our side of the map. One of the reasons why you don't want to engage in that kind of maneuver, and we are going to punish the Iowa for doing so. Meanwhile, we've got an island to our left, which will hopefully shield us from the turpits if we can come to a stop. And there's a citadel on the Iowa. Turpitz, though, is pushing forward, so we're going to have to deal with him. Obviously, his goal is to get torpedoes on us, but it does look like he's going to come around the island broadside. And if he does, well, Lepanto does have 12 381mm main battery guns. So they're 15 inches, of course, but that doesn't really matter. There are 12 of them, and they hit hard, so Turpitz... Even an uncitadelable battleship like this at close range, well, he's lost all of his remaining hit points, and the sap secondaries are going to have no problem finishing off the rest. Plus, he flubs his torpedo launch, so we're scot-free from the torpedoes, and Amalfi wants to come around the corner and donate to us his HP. You can see the secondaries beginning to work, but it will be the main guns that finish this guy off as we get the high-caliber metal courtesy of those secondaries, and you can just see the absolute uh, shower of red when those secondaries open up at the Amalfi. Of course, we do take him out with the main guns, and that just leaves one final enemy destroyer, the Iowa up there, getting his HP melted, and of course the Musashi that is around the corner of this island. Musashi is obviously the most problematic of the ships here, and we are going to make a bit of a mistake and a bit of a deliberate ploy. This is what you might call a tactical beaching at a very non-strategic angle. The Lepanto, the one complaint I have about it, especially stock, is that it's slow. And, well, now we're going to have to reverse broadside to this Musashi. He's coming around the corner, which is, of course, a bad idea for him, considering he's got a Yamato cheek that we can punch for 20,000 damage. It's just a shame that those rocks blocked the rest of our shells. Otherwise, I think that might have been a dev strike. Musashi does a good number to us, but we are heavily armored. He can overmatch our bow, but we can angle our side plating against him quite effectively. And you can see these sap secondaries threatening to take him down, doing 1,200 damage practically every time they hit. 
but one of our teammates finishes him off, and that just leaves the final enemy destroyer. So throughout this game, we push up the entire map, we rack up 185,000 damage and 209 secondary hits. I do wish we could see a detailed stats page breakdown of how much damage these secondaries are actually doing, but I think a significant portion of this 185k. This ship is fantastic. If you don't really like any battleships in the Italian line, like, to be fair, I kind of don't, the Italian battleship line isn't really my thing, but this makes the grind worth it. Honestly, the Caracciolo and the Veneto are good, I just don't necessarily enjoy playing them. This thing, I like playing quite a bit, and I do have to give Wargaming props where it's due, because you've heard me complain in the past about the translation of certain ships when they make their way from World of Warships on PC to World of Warships Legends on console. Sometimes the translation gets a little bit jumbled and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But in this case, Wargaming has taken the entire Italian battleship line and massively improved it. They've massively improved this ship in particular. I actually really hated grinding through this particular boat on PC to get to the tier 10. But just by adding sap secondaries, these Italian battleships are fantastic. They've got conventional secondaries on PC, and they've got SAP main guns, which are capped at 10% damage versus destroyers, so they're completely helpless against destroyers on PC, whereas here, they are absolute menaces, not only to destroyers, but to every other class of surface ships with these secondaries. These are some of the most fun secondaries in the game, and I highly recommend you start your Italian battleship tech tree grind if you haven't already. We'll take subsequent looks at the Lepanto once we get it fully upgraded, but for now I hope you enjoyed the video, if so give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.